Hello my love bugs. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you the Disney Good vs. Evil Beauty book that came out for Halloween. This is from Elf or Eyes, Lips, Face. They have been partnering with Disney for I think um, three consecutive collections now. They first did Ariel, they did Snow White, and now we have this, which is themed around um, Aurora and Maleficent, which I'm assuming is kind of based off of the hype of Maleficent that came out earlier this year. Regardless, I'm extremely excited about it, um, and I think it's one of the coolest books that they've done so far. So you open it up, you have over here your mirror with a little bit of information inside, you have the plastic flap covering everything, and then you have the products. So here is the information on the... Um, respective looks for Aurora and Maleficent and we're going to swatch each of the colors. The only one that I have actually used on the eyes is the neutral collection and that was what just made me think I have to talk about this much sooner rather than later because I know that these things have a tendency to sell out. So here is Sunlight, which is a matte kind of creamy color. It is quite warm and very, very, very yellow. We have Innocence, which is a truly shimmery champagne. We have Briar Rose, which I love so much. Beautiful shimmering pink. We have Sunbeam, which is a warm kind of shimmery brown. I'll get this closer for you guys. We have Forest Beauty, which is a shimmering darker brown, a little bit cooler. And then we have Woodland, which is a quite neutral, dark, shimmery brown. So first we have the color Sunlight, which is a matte highlight, and I really don't know how well you're going to be able to see the lighter colors. We then have Innocence. These are two passes of each, by the way. Innocence is a shimmery champagne. We have Briar Rose, which really just blends right into my skin. It's kind of a pinky light color. Then on the second row of swatches right here, we have Sunbeam. We have Forest Beauty, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Forest Beauty really confused the living crap out of me when I just talked about it. And then we have Woodland. Now something I really quickly want to note is Forest Beauty, I did not realize until really closely inspecting it, and this is something I want to note, these shadows tend to look a little bit darker than they are because they are so far down in the palette. If you can see, there's a lot of room um, where these pans are pretty far down. Innocence has a green duochrome shift on top of it. Now I find that quite strange. I also find it quite strange that once it's actually swatched, it almost looks completely and totally matte. So I think that's kind of weird um, and maybe a little bit deceiving, but I do like the color. It's just very, very strange and I gotta tell you that is a huge surprise to me. I didn't even notice it until this video. On the Night Villain side, we have the shade Sorcery, which is a shimmery silver. We have Evil Fairy, which I love so much, just a bright, bright purple. We have Magic Spell, gorgeous shimmery teal. Edge of Thrones, which is a gray with a lot of shimmer in it. Green Flames, kind of your jungle green. And then lastly, you have a great black, which is black magic, and you've got a lot of shimmer there. All right, so here are swatches. Once again, we have two passes of each color. This is Sorcery. So really beautiful. I was pointing completely in the wrong direction. So Sorcery is a shimmery light gray. We have Magic Spell, that beautiful teal. This one truly needs two passes before it's opaque. We then have Evil Fairy, which is the worst performing eyeshadow in the entire bunch. Completely a matte purple. Took three passes to get that, and I'm not impressed. Um, then we have, this is so hard to see, y'all. We have Hedge of Thorns. Did I say Hedge of Thrones earlier? Oops. Um, Hedge of Thorns, which is a gray. We have Green Flames, that jungle green, and I really like this color a lot. Then we have Black Magic, which was quite opaque in one pass, but I did use two to build it up. Something I want to note, Green Flames as well as Hedge of Thrones had shimmer in the pan, but it translates very minimally, if at all, on the hand or um, in swatch. Then you get an eyeliner in the color Betrayal, which is just a black brightening eyeliner and I gotta tell you I don't have very high hopes for that. I have tried Elf's pencil eyeliner before and wasn't that impressed. Then you have this Elf lip color in True Love's Kiss but if you look at the actual bottom the name is Brett. So they are just putting products that they already have into the palette and giving them different names for the sake of the palette. And then we have the lip color in Betrayal, which again is called Michael and not actually Betrayal. Here's the Brightening Eye Pencil. Horrible, horrible pigmentation on that. Not creamy at all. In fact, I am extremely underwhelmed with that and that will probably just be thrown out. For the Aurora look, we have Brett or True Love's Kiss as it's called in this palette. And these are beautiful, beautiful colors. I think that that was just one pass and it is super opaque. Then we have the shade Betrayal 
which is more of that magenta kind of purpley color. It's much more mauve and wearable once it's swatched. So a bit of a gripe with that. Um, I think that that's kind of annoying. I, I don't know about anyone else, that really kind of cheapens it for me. And I understand that this is a $10 palette and once again, not very high expectations. But it really is just packaged, or it really is products kind of repackaged for the sake of the hype of this. That being said, I think it's a cool little palette to own. I think it's worth $10. You can find it on Walgreens website or in store. If you have coupons, I would use coupons. I quite liked the look that I got out of the day palette. Um, and I haven't used these again. I haven't used any of these on the lips. I have used um, the actual color brett, which I do own in a full size on the lips, and I do really like it. I think particularly the fact that it doesn't have the proper name on the bottom um, is kind of an indication that this was a rushed release. Uh, in comparison to other Disney releases that they've had so far, I thought that this one seemed a little bit poorer in the quality. I would rather that they take longer in between um, collections and put a lot more time into them, even if it is as simple as putting the name of the product on the bottom of the tube. I know that I'm probably whining about that and some of you are like, that is not a huge deal, but to me, it kind of is. Does that mean I hate it? Absolutely not. Does that mean it won't get used? For sure not. I mentioned this in a favorites video. I truly enjoy the palette and it will get a lot of use. I think that it's worth it if you want it for the sake of having it. If you're looking for something even just to use as a good kind of multi-purpose palette and you don't have a whole lot of makeup, this is awesome. Um, I really love the neutral colors and while there was like this huge dud down here, it is still a good palette. But I do have my gripes with it that I thought that I would mention. Overall, I think it's cool. I think that if you want it, get it. If you're like, meh, you probably can skip it and you won't miss it that much. In addition to that, I am giving one of these away on Twitter. So if you want to win one of those, go ahead and follow me and I will be doing the giveaway there. All you'll have to do is retweet one of my tweets and you can get this palette in your little hands for free. But if you enjoyed the review, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and until next time, I love you very, very much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!